welcome to uh, my energy lab. Um, originally, I watched a movie when I was a kid. Our man Flint, he had a lab. And I said, I want one of those. So I got an architect and he built me this. Uh, partway into the project, we decided that we wanted to power the ranch using solar energy. So the roof of this building is at 20 degrees. Why is it 21 degrees uh, latitude, which means that's almost perfect. So the panels are facing south, the building, all the glass, all the windows are facing north. So we get all of the light and none of the heat in this building. Now to pour, power the ranch, we ended up um, putting up 360 panels on this roof uh, for 85 kilowatts of peak power. Let's go inside and I can show you the inverters. Welcome to the energy lab. So, from the roof, the electricity goes into this room. This is the control room. On this side we have the charge controllers. Each one of these charge controllers manages 20 panels. Uh, sorry, 18 panels. So there are 20 charge controllers. 18 times 20 is 360. Now, all of that power comes in from the from the panels and it goes across here at 48 volts. It goes into our 48 volt, 2400 amp bus. And that's basically from here it gets distributed to AC and DC. Now this is our AC. These are, uh, each one of these does eight kilowatts of AC, alternating current, uh, and that powers the ranch. So we have uh, five of them for 40 kilowatts at any given time. The reason that we have five small ones instead of one big one is they break down from time to time. So we all, you know, the worst it gets is we go from 40 to down to 32. But this is the AC for the ranch. Now, whatever we have extra that go, it goes to the battery to release really conduits. So follow me to the battery. These are the batteries. So when we started this project, we, um, we used something called vanadium redox flow batteries. So then I said, okay, the next, the next batteries that we get are going to be batteries from a company that's still going to be around 20 years from now. It's going to be a benign chemistry because that vanadium redox chemistry is still sitting somewhere at my ranch. And uh, <clears throat> they're going to be environmentally benign. So, here they are. They're already at 100% from, from uh, the sun that we had this morning. These were the first ones. This is generation one, we call them 1.0. And then, uh, <coughs> so each one of these is 1.2 kilowatt hours. So one stack is about 20 kilowatt hours. So we have five of them, so it's about 100 kilowatt hours. Um, that runs the ranch. We ran the ranch for quite some time until we started buying electric cars then we needed more. So this is our answer to more. Um, this is a, um, this is the LX. This um, normally is high voltage, but because the whole ranch is running low voltage, we made a low ver voltage version. So this is 32 and 30, so 64 kilowatt hours in this cabinet. And this, this is the, the HI, and this is 16 kilowatt hours. We installed uh, six, six of these in each of 120 schools in Puerto Rico uh, that failed as emergency, emergency shelters because they ran out of power. So more recently they had another hurricane and they had an earthquake. The emergency shelters worked just fine. So three of these power the kitchen, three of these power the rest of the school. And uh, yeah, basically with solar on, on the roof, they ran 24-7 seamlessly.
So I showed you the HI and the LX inside. Um, 480 batteries. 480 batteries, 2.2 kilowatt hours per battery or per module. And uh, the nice thing, again, the nice thing about lithium ferrous phosphate, which is our chemistry, is it doesn't get hot. So we basically don't need any cooling system, not for the batteries. We actually do have a cooling system, but it's for the electronics. Electronics generate heat, so we need to keep them cool. And that's about it. So, um, yeah, if you're going to have a battery that gets hot, you're spending energy cooling the batteries. So that's a waste of energy. All right, there is one more thing. What happened is we had to build the solar so that it work, would work on a cloudy day because we're off grid. What happens is on a sunny day like today, we have all kinds of extra energy. And this is not only us, but this is every place where they have solar. On, on very sunny days, they have extra energy. And what do you do with it? In some places, the electric company says, turn it off. That's called curtailing. But I mean, it's ridiculous for um, a place like Hawaii, which spends $2 billion a year on oil to make uh, electricity, that they would be wasting any. So we thought about it and, then, and we came up with the idea that what you should do with the extra energy is you should make hydrogen. Now this is a little hydrogen, high school hydrogen experiment to show you how it works. It's very simple. This is, the process is called electrolysis. And the way electrolysis works is you have, this is your DC electricity. This is your little membrane here. What's inside these tubes here is water. And what happens is on one side, uh, the, the minus side, you have bubbles, hydrogen bubbles coming up. And on the plus side, you have oxygen bubbles coming up. And they collect in the top. And by the way, it's H2O, so there's twice as many bubbles on the hydrogen side as the oxygen side. And then when there's enough pressure, it comes down to this side and this is called a fuel cell and the fuel cell is the opposite of the electrolyzer what it does is it takes the hydrogen and the oxygen it combines them and then it produces electricity so this thing is about to go off there you go now we have electricity coming out of oxygen and hydrogen let me show you a real electrolyzer so here we're going to go and have a look at an electrolyzer. <coughs> this is the electrolyzer. Uh, this, is, this tank uh, holds hydrogen, this tank holds oxygen. Each one of these has a membrane, just like the membrane you saw in the little ex uh, experiment inside. It has a membrane, and on one side of the membrane we have oxygen bubbles, and on the other side of the mem membrane we have hydrogen bubbles. They get collected here. Um, the oxygen we release into the atmosphere pretty much right away. Why is that? Oxygen is really dangerous. Air is 20% oxygen. So if you have a fire, you're using that 20% oxygen. If there's 100% oxygen, your fire is five times worse. Five times worse. So oxygen is dangerous. Hydrogen is not dangerous. You have to treat it with care just like any other fuel. But if I were to spark this, nothing would happen. You would have to have, in order for it to be dangerous, you have to mix it with just the right amount of oxygen in order for it to explode or whatever. So we take this hydrogen and we store it. We store it out here in these uh, propane tanks. Each one of these tanks holds six kilos of hydrogen. A kilo of hydrogen is the uh, energy equivalent of a, of a gallon of gasoline. These propane tanks are low pressure, so 250 PSI. In reality, when we, when we actually use the hydrogen, we compress it so that it becomes more, how can I say, take up less space. So we have a fueling station here. So this is a standard hydrogen fuel, fueling nozzle. 
This fits any car that's being manufactured today that's going to do hydrogen. And uh, so we fuel the car. It takes about the same amount of time to fuel a hydrogen car as a regular car, as an internal combustion or an ICE car. And here we have a hydrogen car. This is the uh, Toyota Mirai. It runs on hydrogen, so basically we just have to feed it hydrogen every, uh, every once in a while. Now our hydrogen fueling station only goes up to 5,000 PSI. This car can take up to 10,000 PSI. So when it's fully charged, it, it will do 300 miles on a, on a tank of uh, hydrogen. So I, I mentioned that hydrogen, the energy equivalent of a, of a kilo of hydrogen is uh, like a gallon of gasoline. But that's if you use it in an internal combustion engine. If you use it as a fuel cell, the energy equivalent becomes three times. So basically, uh, one kilo is equal to three gallons of gasoline. Um, I think this car holds four, gas four, four kilos, so that would give it four times three, 12 gallons of gasoline. And for a car this size, that's plenty. So the future of energy, of, of solar energy for sure, is that you have batteries to back you up so that you can get through the night. It charges it enough so that you have all, a, a full power all night. And then any extra energy, we use it to make hydrogen. The hydrogen can both be a backup fuel. In other words, if there's many days of darkness, you can use the hydrogen to charge the batteries. And you could use hydrogen as a, as a fuel for vehicles, especially trucks and buses. Battery cars are pretty good, but trucks and buses, the batteries get too heavy. So you spend all of your energy moving batteries instead of moving freight. But uh, hydrogen is relatively light um, and when you compress it, so on long hauls, I, I believe the future for trucks and buses will be hydrogen.